Hey you guys, welcome. Today I'm doing a video about batik with wax and indigo. I've done a lot of projects with resist dyeing techniques, including tie-dye with glue, but I've never done batik with wax. So I'm gonna take you guys along with me and show you kind of like what worked and what didn't work. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing I did was to melt my wax and I'm using this mini crock pot that I found at the thrift store and I'm using half paraffin wax and half beeswax. Here is my pre-washed shirt and before I put any wax on it, I'm going to put some paper in between the front and the back so that I don't have any wax leaking through. I have these quilting templates that I've actually never used for quilting, but they are a really great size and it's the perfect triangular template. So I decided to use it as the pattern and I'm just using my quilting marker here to draw out the pattern. So I'm going to get my foam brush loaded up with the wax and I want it to be saturated but not dripping. I don't wanna get drips on my shirt. So I was trying to be really, really careful. And so then I just started to make the triangles with the wax one by one going all the way up the shirt. I got the first couple layers and then I decided I liked it and I was just going to keep going with the triangle. The liquid wax is pretty messy and can be a little tricky to work with because it can get oversaturated in your brush and then drip on your shirt, which is really not ideal because it is totally permanent. I have a lot of experience working with wax on eggs and it's very similar. Uh, if you get a drip on it, you can try to scratch it off, but it's definitely going to make a mark no matter what. So you have to be quick, but also very tidy with your tools. It's kind of a funny story because actually I was teaching this batik egg class, right, at a gallery in Brooklyn. And afterwards, the person who was in charge of booking the classes came up to me and said, hey, I saw on your website that you have um, shibori on there. Would you want to teach a class about indigo shibori, indigo tie-dye? And I said, oh, sure. That sounds like fun. It's never something that I set out to teach, but it just kind of found me. And now I have this whole channel based off of tie-dye and dyeing techniques. And I just think it's kind of a funny story and I feel like whatever you're meant to do will find you. Okay, back to the project. At this point, I had run out of wax in my little crock pot. So I am taking out some more beeswax and then I'm going to cut off some more of this paraffin. I'll put the links for all this stuff down in the description box for you guys if you wanna check it out. So I just was like shaving it off with this X-Acto knife, just being really careful, trying to get about 50-50 ratio of both the beeswax and the paraffin to put into the crock pot and then let it melt. So once I got to the top of the shirt, I decided to use the smaller foam brush. I got a set of foam brushes that had big foam brushes and small foam brushes. As I was working on this top part of the shirt, I wasn't sure if I wanted to put the pattern on the sleeves or not. So I decided to call it a night and sleep on it and here is what it looked like. All right, so I finished up just the front portion of this t-shirt. You can see the sleeves don't have any wax on them and neither does the back. Whoa. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it on the sleeves as well as the back just because I feel like it could get a little bit um, messy, but I also realized that I dripped a few pieces of wax on the sleeve. And the more I think about it, the more I really think that the sleeves need to have the pattern on them too. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same pattern on the sleeves and the back. I'm just gonna keep going. Also, I'm drinking some homemade ginger tea because I have some allergies today. I put some paper in between the front and the back sleeves and despite my best efforts, I did get a drip on there. So I got a little drip, but that's okay. It'll be a little beauty mark. Okay, it's finally time to dip my batik piece. So I'm just gonna take the paper out. It's ready to dip. 
Okay, so I'm in my garage and I am going to dip my batik piece now. When you're working with indigo, it's really important that you're in a well-ventilated space and I'm wearing a mask and some gloves and I have a drop cloth. If you're interested in learning more about indigo, I suggest that you watch the video that I'm going to link after this video. I go over multiple folds and talk a lot about pre-reduced indigo. I'm just going to make sure that I get my oxidized to go off and now I'm going to put my piece in. I'm going to be very careful here. It's been in there for about a minute and I'm just going to take it out and look at it. It's kind of like folded up so what I'm going to do is actually fold it the opposite way. You can see it's green and it will turn blue after it oxidizes. So let's just keep it in there a little bit longer. All right, I'm gonna take it out. It's oxidized quite a lot and um, it's dripping dry on the rack here. So I'm going to dip it one more time. Here it is on the drying rack, just oxidizing and hanging out. Okay, so my piece has completely dried and I'm going to start the wax removal process. So I have an old towel here and I have my old iron here that I use for projects that's not my sewing iron and I have some paper. So I'm going to put the shirt in between this layer of paper and then put this paper on top. Here is my shirt, you can see how saturated it is and I have not rinsed it yet I want to try to get this wax off first I'm just going to start pressing and it's on as high as it'll go just want to get as much wax as I can off and this process might take a little while okay so it's future me here talking and this process took forever I just wanted to stress that um, and in hindsight, I wish I had even done more ironing of the shirt before trying to wash it. It had so much wax on it. And if you're doing this project, just iron, 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 iron with paper until you get it so that there's almost no wax left. Also, if you guys are enjoying this video, I just want to remind you to go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you like content like this. So here it is after it's been ironed a bunch of times and it still is like pretty crunchy. And as you can see on the floor here, there is a lot of paper that's very saturated with wax. So at this point, I should have just kept going. But no, I decided to try and wash it out. So I got my stock pot that is only for dyeing and I filled it up with water and got it to a boil. So once it was simmering, I got a bucket with cold water next to it. And my plan was to put the piece into the hot water, agitate it and try to get as much wax off as possible and then put it into the cold water. The idea was that the wax would harden in the cold water and I would be able to scrape it off of the top of the water, but there was just too much wax in this t-shirt still for this to work. And I was trying to scrape off the melted wax from the surface of the hot water with this piece of plastic. So I ultimately just gave up for the day and let the shirt dry again and I took a break from the project. All right, so I'm back in my studio. I had to take a little break. We went on a trip and I am going to try to finish my batik today. It is chilling on the floor and um, everything is still set up. I didn't touch it. Um, it's kind of a mess, you guys, but I just need to get it done because I need to do some other projects. So we're gonna power through. I was feeling overwhelmed by this project and all the mess, so I decided to tidy up in my studio to help me feel better. So I just kind of wiped down all the surfaces the best I could and kept going. Okay, so this water is cooled down and you can see there's a, a layer of wax on it. So I'm gonna remove this wax, it's cooled off so it's easier to remove. And then I'm going to repeat the boiling process 
and ironing process on my shirt. This is a gigantic mess, you guys. I don't know if I'm ever doing this again, to be honest. Or maybe I'm doing this wrong and there's a better way. But it's probably best to do it outside. So after cursing this project, I just put down more paper and got my iron back out and just ironed, ironed, ironed. And there was still so much wax, you guys. So I definitely did not iron it up the first time. And the second time I just ironed like crazy for probably an hour and got it all out. It's just the nature of the pattern I did. There's so much wax. If I were to do batik again, I think I would do a smaller design just like on the front of a t-shirt or something just to kind of do this technique, which is really cool, but I would not use so much wax. So I was just using my iron in kind of smaller areas and concentrating on trying to just get out as much wax as I could. And I found that focusing on smaller areas with iron, just kind of keeping it there, got it hotter and helped the wax to come out more quickly. Okay, so I think we're actually getting somewhere. I've got a lot of the wax out. So I'm going to just put a little bit more paper in between here and try to get out more that way. So you guys get the idea. I just kept going and kept going and kept going until it was time to boil the t-shirt again. Into the pot. After I put the shirt in, I let it continue to simmer and I agitated it a lot so that it would get all of, of the wax free. And I started to see the wax floating to the top of the water and there was a lot more of it. I don't think I had the water hot enough the last time. And then I started to dip in pieces of cardboard just to kind of pick up that wax on the top and you can see how much wax there is and it was solidifying almost immediately after I took it out of the water. So then I just grabbed a ton of cardboard and started ripping it up into small pieces so that I could dip it in and just get as much wax out of the pot as possible. And this seemed to work pretty well. So I just did this for probably 15 minutes or so. All right, so I'm trying to like kind of scrunch down the shirt into one corner and then come in with my cardboard and just scoop. I just kept scooping off the wax and letting it boil so that more would float to the top. And then finally it was done. Okay, so I'm gonna take this out and put it in this cold water. Ooh. Okay, so here is what this all looks like. Okay, so I've cleaned out the pot and this is damp, but a lot of the wax is off. I'm just going to spray this dissolve it on it. I don't know if you guys have ever used this, but it takes off like wax and grease and crayon stickers, lipstick, grease. Okay, great. So I'm just going to um, add a little dissolve it and then wash it out with water and maybe a little soap and just I think then it should be good. I sprayed a lot of dissolve it all over the shirt and it smells like oranges which I love and this I think really did help to dissolve any of the excess wax. And once it was covered in dissolve it I agitated it with my hands to really get it deep in the fibers and then I added the dish soap and then I used some water to rinse it and you can see all the excess indigo and dissolved wax coming out into that water. So I just poured it out and then I just kept going. After rinsing it a few times, I let it sit for a few hours in the dissolve it and then after that I added more dish soap and some more water and just really washed it and there was not a lot of excess indigo and wax left so it was done and it smelled like oranges which was nice and I let it dry. Here is the finished shirt and I think it looks really great after all that I think it was worth it. For the next few washes I'm going to be hand washing it 
and straining the water to make sure there is no wax going down my pipes. It's really important to not pour wax down your pipes, which is why I took so long to try to get all the wax off before washing it again. I really like this pattern and I think I'm going to get a lot of wear out of this shirt. If you've ever done batik, let me know down in the comments. Tell me what kind of tools did you use? What kind of dye did you use? I'd love to know. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this other indigo video that I made that I think you'll really like. Alright, see you guys in the next one. Bye!